On Tuesday, September 17th, at the corner of Green Mountain Estates Road and Richville Road in Manchester, a ribbon-cutting ceremony marked the end of a long-running 20-year-old saga over sewer and water service and road maintenance for the roughly 40 homes in the Mountain View Estates, often referred to as the Green Mountain Estates. Select Board Chairman Ivan Beatty explained some of the background before the final deed was done. The culmination of 20 years of negotiation, trying to reach a, a, a negotiated settlement that works not only for the town, the water, the sewer department, but also for the residents, the heirs of the, of the uh, Hayes Estate. Um, thanks to Doug Kilburn for all his hard work on this for 20 years. Thanks to the Hayes family. Thank you to all the residents. And thank you for the uh, residents of the town of Manchester. I think we've reached a settlement that I wasn't always in favor of, but at this point, we've gotten to a, a place where we're, it's in the best interest of not only the estate of the Hayes, not only the residents of Green Mountain Estates, but also the ratepayers for the water and sewer department and the taxpayers for the town of Manchester. I'm really happy to be here. And with that said, you ready? count it off. Three, two, two. one. Hey. <laughs> to roaring applause. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. The agreement, more than 20 years in the making, conveys ownership of the components of the common utilities, such as the water and sewer lines, and related infrastructure from the estate of Richard and Nadine Hayes, two Manchester residents who developed the property back in the 1970s and 1980s, before their tragic deaths in an automobile accident in 2004. The estate will pay $860,000 into a trust account to help defray the costs of replacing or improving the roads and utilities in the Green Mountain Estates. According to the agreement, the town of Manchester will take ownership of only the Hayes Estate-owned main water dis distribution and sewerage collection lines and not the service lines running to individual houses. The Hayes Estate will also convey ownership and maintenance responsibility for the roads running through the housing development. Town Manager Scott Murphy explained further. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a culmination of a long process, and um, basically we're adding 41 homes onto our, our system. We're water and sewer system, and sewer plant, and two roads. Uh, so we're going to start immediate upgrades. We're going to start uh, elevating a couple of the manholes that are out here. We're putting in two brand new manholes. Uh, we're going to grade it and we're going to prep it for paving. And we should have the paving done um, by the fall, we hope. Uh, the, the other thing that we've done is we've ordered some couple new pumps for the pump station, uh, more powerful pumps that should handle the, uh, the increase in flow. And so all in all, it's a, it's a win-win for both sides. So that will enable the town then to take direct control, it's, for lack of a better yeah, term, uh, over the, the roads and the water system for the Green Mountain Estates area here. That's correct. It's okay. added to our town, uh, town roll of highway mileage now. So, you know, this is a process that went back, I think, almost 20 years. 20 years, yeah. yeah. What uh, what took so long to kind of uh, come to an agreement between the well, two Well, there parties? was, apparently there were lawsuits back and forth, and and you had an estate that had to be settled, so it went into probate court, and, um, and we had to have, like, four or five different lawyers involved in this to get to this finish line, so it, that generally takes a little bit of time, too. We also had a chance to speak with Deborah Hayes McGraw, one of the heirs of the Hayes estate, for her reaction. Yeah, and I'm very glad that it's happened. It should have happened a long time ago, and it shouldn't have had to go through all this the last 20 years, but I'm very glad it has happened now, and, and uh, I hope my father's looking down on us right now and saying, at least you don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that it Greg Cutler, one of the members of Manchester's select board, noted the agreement might help with building more resiliency into the area to offset potential flooding from the Bourne Brook, as has happened in recent years. I think we're definitely planning on looking at ways in which we can mitigate some of the post-flooding problems. I, I, if we have an event where 
water still is coming into the neighborhood. We've looked at ways to maybe catch it, and as the, as the uh, water table recedes, the water will be able to, to go with it that maybe otherwise have sat on top of the surfaces. When you put in an impervious surface too, we have to worry about how are we gonna direct that water out of out of the neighborhood? But overall, those are issues that have been uh, thought about. They're, they're working on developing a plan to make it better for standing water issues. In, in terms of uh, events that caused major flooding here, we've got two other ideas that are in the works, we hope, and we're, we're looking at funding for them, and that is creating several, what I call lagoons. And these are, these are areas off of Bornbrook that will catch uh, water and, uh, and and major events and take in all the uh, stone and other debris that comes down. And then you have channels underneath that then direct the water back into the stream. So those are two areas that we're looking at. And I think overall we've, we've got a good handle on what's happening here, but time will tell. According to an article in the Manchester Journal published two years ago, the agreement would also open the door to building a town sewer line on Richville Road, which could connect to existing housing along the road and possibly to a town-owned 60-acre parcel off Airport Road. The property is in a mixed-use zone, which generally encourages the development of residential housing with conditions and has been mentioned as a potential site for a housing development. At least now, after more than 20 years of legal wrangling, that door has now swung open. For the GNAT TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.